Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to the Woke Nation. Also to this new day. It's a great day. It's our day. And how are you doing? I hope you are doing great. Doing yourself great service. Try to have fun. Catch some fun. It is your life. Don't let anyone rob you that joy. Don't let don't keep don't give the key to your happiness, the key to your joy, the key to your greatness, the key to your freedom into anyone's hand or to anyone. No matter who they are, you have to know it is your life. You are the driver. You are the one that must drive your life. You have that life to live. You don't need any mentor over your life. You don't need any leader over your life. You don't need any cover. You don't need anyone to be your guide. You may you may think, oh, why are you saying that? Oh, babe? If another person guiding you, that person must mislead you. Why? Because that person is not you. That person don't actually know who you are. But the person are using their own opinion or their own experience to guide you because you surrender to them. That person guiding you does. That person have two heads. Whether it's me or somebody else, we all are here just to help one another, not to lead. If you must lead, lead yourself. Let that person you call it a lead themselves. Okay, so you work on once again. Maz, you welcome. I want to share with us uh, about African leaders. Uh, somebody shared that video this morning or yesterday morning with me. So I listened to that video several times and I decided to judge that video because that's what we must do. Religion don't want us to judge. Politicians don't want us to judge. Or politics, no. They just want us to believe in religion and they just want us to vote in politics. And both of them are there to control us, to make us good slaves. And they keep telling us that our vote is our uh, our vote is our power or our belief establish us. Or yes, our our belief establish us under their ru rulership. Our vote also give them we give them power to rule over us. Imagine that somebody you put in power have power to control you. You don't have power anymore. He's now using all the power majority of people gave to him and using it to control that majority. And you say you don't know that you are programmed. You don't know that you have been brainwashed. You don't know that you have been indoctrinated. You don't know that you are a slave. You ought to know. And that's why we are trying to free ourselves. Yeah, it will take, you know, great things for you to change things. But start with yourself. Start with yourself. No condition is permanent. Yes, there was time they weren't in power. Then after they come to power, and also there is time they will get out of that power. So, and the people will take back the power. Our African leaders, African leadership, you see what is going on. But the truth is this. There is no such thing as African leaders now. We have African misleaders. They are puppets to the foreign governments, foreign powers, uh, some in America, some in Europe, some in Asia. So somebody shared that video with me that provoked me to share this and use it because that's part of the thing I've been saying. But you know, there are many sheep that are looking for a leader. I, say, I, I started thinking, I said, do you know if Oyedebo take my pose, like I make a pose, my post hardly get like 100 likes or 100 comments or something like that or 100 shares but i have 5000 uh, friend uh, about 5000 friends on my list that's 4999 because if it's 4000 5000 i cannot add i cannot receive so i said Imagine my post, I, I share it just to help our people open their eyes, they kick against me. If we hit ball, take that same post that I make and share it on his own wall. Millions of them will share it. Millions of them will like it because they are sheep. 
they are sheep. That's that they, they follow their their shepherd. I am not their shepherd. So I want to share this. There is nothing new that you can hear from any politician or any any religious leader that people like us have not been trumpeting, you know, shouting and posting all these years. I see some people still sometimes they send me in boss something i've been sharing many years <laughs> on facebook but you know facebook is also limiting my viewers which i don't really care i'm sowing seed if they don't see it they may be live they can see it when i share it if you don't see it maybe when somebody else share it. but the main thing is this we are doing this so that the truth will prevail i'm not doing it my, like yesterday i donated money to somebody on online because I see that he's no longer religious, so he was asking for help. Okay, I donated some money. You see, that's what I can do. I don't give, as I said, I don't give because somebody just asks. No. I give when I want to give, as I want to give, and how I want to give. Because nobody gave me that money, I labored for it. Okay, so you don't say, oh, I cry, you must give to me. It's a lie. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm woke. I'm no longer religious. There is nothing you can do to cajole me to give. Oh, I don't know. No. So why I did that? Because you have to practice what you preach. As I've been saying, you can't believe in God and expect me to give to you. And I'm not expecting you to give to me either. Like biggest, like let best of a feather flock together. That's how we must move forward. And uh, when you come to what people are sharing, or this, you have to judge all things. You don't swallow whatever I say because oh, this guy, I like the way he's saying. Say you know, it's not the way I'm saying it. It's not actually even what I'm saying. It's you researching everything. That's what we open your eyes. That's what you remember what I shared yesterday about Eve. You know, when she had from the serpent, the serpent did not tell her, hey, hey, take the fruit. The serpent never deceived Eve. But when she gets informed, she saw. That is the first time she saw, oh, this tree is good for food. It's good for food. It's pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise. She just reach out. No power can stop you once you get informed. When you are well informed, you will live your life freely. But if you still have belief system, you will not. So welcome. I want to play this video. It's about 2 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds video. So I want you to listen up from Pastor Chris. I already shared the video on my word. I say Pastor Chris is a kettle calling pot black. Pastor Chris is a thief just like a politician. Okay, religious leaders and political leaders are bears of a feather. You can help me add S to that bears because I say some people will read it. Oh, this guy is illiterate, even he's not, he don't know how to speak English. Fuck English. English was borrowed, was, 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 was originated from me. Our ancestors, every language is traceable to Africa. So I can speak it anyhow. Or tell me one Englishman that can speak my own language as I'm speaking English. The reason why I'm speaking English is because they forced me to learn it in school. They used to beat us up if we speak uh, our own language in the class. And do you think they, they were teaching us something good? They were teaching us away from us. And that's why you see how Africa is today. So we don't have African leaders. Even most Africans are not Africans. They are confused. They tell you they are Christians, Muslims, Jews. And that's who they think they are. But they don't know who they are. As I was saying to my co-worker, I say, she says she knows who she is. I say, you don't know. You, tell, you say you are a Christian. She says, yes. I say, so you don't know yourself. When you know yourself, you, don't, you won't say you are a Christian as a black person. When you know yourself, you won't say you are a Jew as a black person. When you know yourself, you won't say you are a, you are a Muslim as a black person. You will say, I'm African. I am human. I am original. I am the best. Hello. <laughs> I almost say hallelujah. <laughs> Bullshit. Okay. So, 
You know, God is angry at me every day because God have anger issue, and I don't care. I keep provoking that God, that useless God. And how I know I'm provoking God is through his worshippers. The worshippers of God keep bombarding me, calling me names and all that bullshit. And any time I also decide, I also insult them back. Because whatever they think they are, I am. If they think they can insult me, I can, I can insult them even more. Because I know them, they don't know me. I used to be in their shoes. They never in my in my shoes. They have never been in my shoe right now. I am woke. They are religious. I used to be religious. Mm -hmm. So let's play. So this um, video, then we uh, we judge it. You join me to judge it. Uh, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Are you okay? the brain drain they take the best of africa take them away to europe take them away to america yes. and now to asia to china yes. Yes. and you don't care yes. what kind of leadership that doesn't think about the future what kind of leadership has no vision for the future yes, sir. We need leaders in Africa that can think. Leaders that have a brain, that have some mind, yes. that have a vision. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Even as a, a young person in the university, I was just a young guy in the university. I made up my mind, still as a young kid. As a thief. I will never go to another country to beg yeah, but yes, to steal, yes. for money or anything. Yes, sir. And I haven't done it. Yes, of course, sir. because here it yes. is. Glory, yes, sir. <laughs> see, see the ship shouting glory. Yes. <laughs> here I haven't ship. done it, I never will. Yes, sir. Of course, you're a thief. Wake up and think. Yes. Uh -huh. Wake up. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. And the Where will Africa put there. away childish things? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Every nation in Africa, listen, Africa is old enough. At this time, every nation in Africa that is still calling for help from another country, the leadership is a shame. Yes, sir. Same, same you have more than enough resources. To help your country. Yes. Why are you borrowing money from nations that don't have it? Mm. Europe doesn't have enough resources to borrow you money. Yes. Neither does China. Yes. They're only borrowing you money that they got from you. Yes, sir. Wake up. Yes, sir. You know, that's my our word wake up we have been calling them to wake up but chris pastor chris has been calling people to believe he preached jesus you know when i was a christian i i borrowed uh, that phrase from him thank you lord jesus he always said thank you lord jesus every <laughs> day thank you lord jesus mm, thank you lord jesus so let's judge it so as i said he is a kettle calling pot black uh, he started by saying, you know, "Look at the brain. Uh, the, uh, look, look, look at the brain drain." Is you know what I've been telling you guys? That faith rot the brain, brain drain or <laughs> brain drain. Yes, faith, politics. Those things have drained African brain. The people, the people you say that will be leaders of tomorrow. No, they are looters of tomorrow. They are preparing to loot. That's why we don't have leaders in Africa. We don't have African leaders, but we have African misleaders under the influence of foreign powers. So let us judge the leaders in Africa, both religious leaders and political leaders. All of them are leaders in Africa. Like Pastor Chris, you just watch. He got millions of people following him. Millions of people under his anointing. Millions of people in his ministry. 
So many people are following him, actually, some because of his look, some because of the way he speaks, some because of Jesus. <laughs> so, but you know, deeper life people will never listen to him. <laughs> they say, you know, preaching to Jesus is preaching <laughs> nothing, something else. So, religious leaders and the political leaders are based, based off a feather. And according to Pastor Chris, I want to judge what he said and use it to show us that he is the same with the same leaders he's talking about. He's in Africa. All right? So, according to him, um, hi, uh, he said, he said they take the best of Africa to Europe and America and Asia. He said they take the best of Africa out of Africa to Europe. They take the best of Africa. And uh, they say that the people in power don't care. The leaders don't care care when i'm even saying this if you see many things coming to my head for me to speak this is the man who believed the bible this is the man who idolized the bible and is saying this nonsense he said that they take the best of africa to europe america and asia and the leaders don't care. And he got the Bible that tells him that leaders we are put in there by God to rule over people. Just think, you know, if you can think, the problem many people are having is they listen sometimes without thinking. They listen to their leaders without thinking. They listen to all these preachers without thinking. They're only looking for what to believe. They're only looking for what to justify or confirm their illusion or their, 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 their suspicion. He said the leaders don't care that they are taking the best of Africa, taking best, best doctors in America from Africa. Best anything in the whole world from Africa. Who gave the world internet? Africa. But look at Africa. In which country in Africa do black people, African people, do the African people have high speed internet? We are. In America, here yeah, you can go to library, you can go to some even stars like Dunkin' Donut and use their Wi Fi on your phone. In Africa, like in Nigeria, you pay for Wi Fi. Yet it's not serving you. Some of them they tell you will last one month, one week is gone. Just watching one YouTube video. That's why when you make two minutes video, many Nigerians will watch it. But like what I'm doing now, no, unless I begin to split it, some of them know. Oh, ten minutes, I cannot watch that. Twenty minutes, now thirty minutes. Oh, because when they do, I don't blame them. When. I used to say that like, when Africans begin to have steady power supply and high-speed uh, uh, data, high-speed internet connection, you will see how they will awaken trash religion and everything. So when you see like in America, you see young people, they don't care about religion or in developed country. That is the reason. Because they have time, they can watch something, they can take time to uh, you know, Google something and go to YouTube and listen. Then they make their own judgment and say, no, what, trust this. What am I going to charge for? Let me watch them. <laughs> what am I going to charge for? If God cares, why will people be suffering? You're telling me about God. Fuck God. Let me live my life. In fact, if that hell exists, let God. Why did God create me and put me all through this? Let him send me to hell. Let me go and burn there. Is he not the one that created me? Leaders don't care don't care about the foreigners taking the best of Africa today. How did I come to America? Through lottery visa. What did, uh, do they give everybody lottery visa? They, no. You must be the one qualified to work before you. they can give it to you. But you know, it's not like that in Africa. They're taking the best. They, 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 when they, even when they invaded Africa and took us as slaves, you think they were just catching any half person, taking them as slaves. No. 
They took people that they know this ones are strong. They never can you see them taking blind people or cripple. No. You they must they must make sure this person is strong enough. And some of them they think they are strong enough along the way they find out they are not strong. Those people the ones that many people die without even getting to America or to wherever they want to take them as slaves. They are taking the best of Africa to Europe, America, and Asia. This criminal man of God say that the leaders, the political leaders, don't care. How about his God, who is watching over everything? Is he not confirming, Job chapter 9, verse 23, that God look at the plight of the innocent and they laugh? God is laughing at the plight of the innocent. See the innocent Christians suffering and dying in Nigeria. God is laughing at their plight. See at the innocent Muslims, innocent Jews who are dying in several places. And God is laughing at their plight. And you tell me that that God you worship is love. And love is of God. The only thing I can tell you about that God is fuck God. The question I want to ask him that said that, what do we get from those who are taking the best from us? Oh, I made that decision. I was telling my, I said, if I hear any doctor from Africa, especially Nigeria, telling me he's a doctor, I say, shut up, you are not. How can you say you're a doctor? Your president is going to London for medical treatment. I like that African video that I shared. That man said that we, we, are, we went to school, you know, to become a remember uh, uh, people that remembers not people that think so you become a doctor just to know how to give when to give an adult and when and, and to take vital signs that's all you're a doctor what medicine have you produced look at our native doctors those people you call demonic and evil or herbalists they make medicine the herbalists you, if you listen to like Anambra An An Broadcasting Service, I don't know their name now because they keep changing their names. You see some of, 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 of some of our native doctors or herbalists, you know, making uh, 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 commercials about their product. They are making medicine. When I was growing up, you know about the um, um, uh, Ekan Power. Um, Bobon, he said all that. Our people, we are making all that. But you know, foreign things has taken over, so uh, we don't really care about all that. So, what are these people? What are we getting back from them? Oh, was it yesterday or two days ago? I, I was thinking, is it wrong for you to steal back from those who stole from you? Is it wrong? Is it wrong for you? Somebody stole from you. Now you have opportunity to steal back from that person. Is it wrong for you to steal from that person? They stole from you and tell you, thou shalt not steal. Don't steal. No. If you stole from me, I will steal also from you. No matter, thou shalt not steal. But Africans, we have to e equip ourselves to be able to take it back from them. It's not what you just run your mouth and you think it's a political thing, you will get it with a diploma. Oh, I mean... All that uh, nonsense they tell you. Understand that these people indoctrinated us, brainwashed us through democracy, through religions, and we embrace it as way. Oh, this is civilization. No, it's not. It's corruption. And listening to Chris, is Chris or Yaklome himself, that Pastor Chris, is he not against the Bible? He's against the Bible. What he just said, what he just did, is completely against the Bible. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 said, Let every soul, that is, let every person, be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. So the leaders he's talking about are from God. All these politicians, the African leaders, they are ministers of God according to the Bible. 
Okay. He said that, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. God appointed them, but they don't care about the people. Why? Because God don't care about the people. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. Talking about government. And those who re resist will bring judgment on themselves. So when Pastor Chris is resisting those uh, in, in authority, he's bringing judgment on himself. Bringing cause on himself, bringing wrath on himself, <laughs> and the judgment is what I'm doing now. He brings this judgment on himself. He said, "For rulers are not a terror to good works, a lie, but to evil. No, they bring evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? He said, "Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. No, they will put you in jail." They will not praise you. When you do what is good, you go to your to our prisons. You see many innocent people in there. Okay? For he is God's minister, a president, a governor, a chairman, or anyone in authority is God's minister to you for good. Chris, that's you. Okay? He said, he said, um, he said, but if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword. In vain, the sword, as I said, is who? Christ. And for he is God's minister, an avenger, to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, whether you like it or not. And that's why I hate that silly God. He makes you slaves. Slaves are subjects. I'm not subject to anyone. He said, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. So, judging what Chris said or did, you can agree with me according to the Bible, he is against the Bible. He has risen against God's anointed. The, the political leaders in Africa are God's anointed. And if Chris or Yak Loma L, any other man of God speak against them directly or indirectly, they have risen against God's anointed. Second thing I pick from that video what kind of leadership that doesn't think about the future? That's what Chris asks. What kind of leadership that doesn't think about the future? Religious leadership. Religious leaders don't think about the future. They are thinking about heaven. They want to go to heaven. <laughs> All those African leaders we have today, they are not thinking about the future. They are thinking about heaven. First, having good life here and going to heaven to finish it. Yeah, these people don't know. Um, or maybe most of them don't read every part of Bible like this. You can't have it here and have it also in heaven. Remember the story of the rich man and the Lazarus. You can't be rich here on earth and be rich in heaven if that heaven exists. That's why the life of the, those rich pastors should teach you that heaven does not exist. If heaven exists, they will be poor like Jesus. Jesus look at his disciples and say, Blessed are you poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not for the rich. It's for the rich to enter that heaven. It will be like the camel going through the eye of the needle. Some people think it's the needle you use to sew clothes. No, it is a small gate that like you can drive your 40 feet container through small gates. Small gate that can enter only motorcycle. You cannot. The only way you can take whatever that container carries through is by offloading it and taking it through that gate. But now, without that, no way. A container with load cannot go through the same gate that a motorcycle went go through. That's what that place was telling you. And it's talking about those who are rich in this world. You say you already have your heaven already. Like Oyedep, all of them, all those rich preachers, rich ministers. There's no heaven for them. But the reason they know that there's heaven doesn't exist. It's what the Romans put there to control, especially the Africans. 
He said the leaders don't have vision for the future. I remember in Nigeria many years ago, they have the vision 2020. 2020 is all, uh, about to go. Where is that vision? What is happening? But, you know, they deceive educated people easily. They make up things, begin to do seminars, because they, you see them on the television interview. They begin to blow grammar. Why they are not going anywhere? They are not doing anything for themselves. They have no vision for the future. The pastor Chris that is talking about vision for the future, his vision is heaven. And he teaches it. When we are, you know, he likes to sing that song. When we are get to heaven. We really, I used to buy, I used to buy and listen to his tape now. He likes singing that. We should say, oh, we, we all get to heaven. When we all see Jesus, I shall be to Praise Allah! Nonsense! And this man is talking about leaders without vision. When he's selling vision of heaven that does not exist and the ripping people of their heart and money with such messages. Come on, wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. Enough is enough. Chris have vision of prosperity through stealing. He is robbing other people. You remember one time in Nigeria, somebody took government money or company money to pay, I think that, or maybe you no know, vow to Chris, millions of naira. I remember one prominent man in Nigeria stopped going to Christ Embassy because of that. He said, how can he not refund the money? He said, no, the money was given to God. <laughs> he had vision of prosperity by through stealing from people. What future do you think believers in God or in Jesus have? This is the future that Chris, Chris, Chris or Yakilome, this pastor Chris, this is their future according to the Bible. The future they should think about. Colossians chapter 3, he said, if then you were raised with Christ, you know, he always pre uh, preach about being raised with Christ. He says, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you, you for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will you will appear with him in glory. And this you see this man talking about vision in this world. At the same time, he believed this bullshit I just read from the Bible. You've been raised with Christ. You will reign with Christ. And you were talking about leaders who don't care about the future. Are you not one of the people that make those leaders don't care about the people? And that's why people must rise up, begin revolution, begin to topple the, go the government. Yeah, do that. You say you are preaching violence. Uh, is he not preaching? Is he not freedom of speech? You arrest me and jail me or kill me. That's bullshit. You are free to do whatever you want to do. I will still come back. Continue what I'm doing. The third thing I picked from that video, he said, we need leaders in Africa that can think, have brain, and have some might. <laughs> I said, is this, is this have some might or have some might? He said, we need such leaders. But he is educated enough to be such leaders. He gave it up for the easy way, quick way to make money, which is using the name of Jesus, because that's the quickest way to make money in Africa. Especially when you are a graduate, you know how to put words, you know, look at him, good looking. Many women will follow your ministry and with whatever their family will join. Mm. We need leaders in Africa. 
You cannot find such leaders in Africa today. You say, no, how about that one, Paul? Is he the one that, that is... The, yes, he's doing well. Of course. But not as a real African leader yet. When you see real African leader, you will know. Because real African leaders will motivate all Africa. And everywhere you will see revolution and people will begin to wake up and say, enough is enough. We don't need waste, waste uh, way of doing anything. We don't need any foreign way of doing anything. We do it our way. He's talking about leaders that have brain, leaders that have might. But he will still say that you are nothing without God. You are nothing without Jesus. He will still say believe. How can you believe? I'm talking about brain. For you to believe, you have to abandon your brain. If you use your brain, you will not believe. If you use your brain, you will not believe in God. If you use your brain, you will not believe in the Bible. So you have, you, we need leaders that can think. Why can't he also think? Look at our people. Enough is enough. This is the same person that think or believe in one Nigeria. He cannot even say that truth. That there is no such thing as one Nigeria. That white man created Nigeria. So we need to create our own. Even if we want to be one, let us make our own. Make our own decision and say this is our name. And it's okay. We are still one. This is who we are now. Not following whatever white man put down for us. We will not do that. The religion he has. That's why I say, what do we get from those who take the best out of Africa to their place? Christianity is part of the thing we get from them. Islam is part of the thing we get from them. And see how they are messing up our lives. See how they are messing up our land. You see, we have Boko Haram today in Nigeria. We have Fulani husband today killing their own brothers and sisters because they don't have the same faith with them or because they don't belong to the same party with them. The fourth thing I, I take from this, say, as a young man or as a young person in the university, he made up his mind that he will not go to any foreign country to beg. And I was, he said, of course, he's right. He, because he already made up his mind to rob people, to steal from people in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, using the Bible. He has made up his mind to do that. So he cannot beg. When you see a man of God saying, I will not beg, of course, he will not beg because he's collecting tithes and offering in every service. People invite him and raise offering for him. People lodge him in a good hotel. He, he, people buy him new cars. Why will you beg? You are a thief, but a beggar is better than a thief. I will rather beg than to steal. I will rather beg than to rob people. A beggar is better than a thief. Pastor Chris is a thief. Just like every other pastor everywhere in the whole world, they are thieves and robbers. Beggars are better than them. He say he will not beg in foreign countries. He have branches of his church or ministry. In foreign countries. I remember the shop right in East Orange shop right here. I live now. I remember one year I saw them selling Rhapsody of, of, of uh, realities, right? Giving it to people, inviting people to their store. I don't blame him because he already know how to make money. So he will tell you I will not beg. He's not begging. He's robbing people in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, using the Bible. He is robbing people in foreign countries. He's not begging. When he goes there for seminar, do you know how much they raise for him? Do you know how much money they give to him? Of course, they pay his uh, flight ticket and all that and put him in a nice hotel 
And sometimes what they do with Ghana, you know, body no be wood, you know. <laughs> ah, Dara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fifteen, I, uh, the, the number five ten, I take from there. Said he said, put away childish things. He said he quote he quoted Paul. Paul never existed, but he don't he don't care. He's using Paul. Say Paul say when I was a child, I think like a child. But when I was a man, I put away childish things. He said when we African leaders put away childish things, but he don't know that religion or Jesus Christ is to adults what Santa Claus is to children or to kids. Christianity is a childish thing. Jesus Christ is a childish thing. Put Christ away. Put Jesus away. Will Christ do that? You are telling African leaders to put childish things away while you are holding on to religion. Holding on to Christianity, holding on to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, holding on to God of Israel. All those things are childish things because they are childish things copied from your originality, your African spirituality. Your African spirituality is the elders. Put away childish, put away Jesus Christ. Put away Bible, put away Quran, put away Torah. That's what Africans must do. Whether you are African leader or African follower, whatever you are in Africa, you have to put away Jesus Christ, have to put away Quran, put away Torah, put away Bible, put away everything God, put them away. Put away Jesus Christ, you, Pastor Chris, and everyone that believe in Jesus Christ. Put away Jesus Christ and begin to think for yourself. The system I picked there, he said, African nations calling for help from another country, like foreign country, you know, he said, that leadership is a shame. The same to him. The same to him. Any man of God who is calling for help, calling for offering, calling for tithe, calling for seed, calling for donation from people, it's a shame. How can you tell me you are you are servant of God? You are you are you are, you are man of God, God who created all things, God who don't need anything, yet you are raising money from people. You are a shame. Any servant of Christ, any follower of Jesus Christ who is asking people to bring tithes and offering or money or to contribute to his ministry, that person is a shame. That ministry is a shame. That church is a shame. Jesus who fed 5,000 people with two fishes and the three loaves of bread. Jesus who never collected tithes and offering from people. And that same Jesus you are following. But you are asking people to give to you. Jesus said, greater works than he did, you will also do. So why are you not feeding the multitude as Jesus did in the Bible? And Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in his name, he will do it. It's there in your Bible. John chapter 14, verse 12 and verse 14. Do greater works than Jesus. Then if you need anything for your ministry, Jesus said, ask him whatever you need. He asked the God, Father in his name. He said, he will do it. He will give it to you. But you are asking help from people. You know, this ministry, we need to buy private jet. We need your contribution. <laughs> and you say you are a servant of God and follower of Jesus Christ. You are a shame. Mm. He talk about African leaders having enough things, enough resources to help their people. So how about him? How about the poor people in his own church? Poor people in his own ministry? He's still collecting tithes and offering from them. Why he have enough to take care of them? Enough to pay their children's school fees. Enough to build houses for them. 
but you take that money to buy private jets, <laughs> building mansions for himself. I'm telling you, both of you are going to hell. Mm. When we pastor Chris and his light, all those religious leaders that are rich say it's enough. We don't need your tithes and offering anymore. It's in your Bible. Let me read it. Exodus chapter 36. Exodus 36. Let's see Moses. All of them always follow Moses. But let's see what Moses did as a servant of God. 36. Exodus chapter 36, verse uh, 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. No pastor will ever do this. No man of God today will ever do this because they are imposters and the thieves. He said, Five, oh man, come on, serious stuff. Five and six said, and uh, the work has come to Moses and said, Moses, there is already more than we need for the work the Lord has assigned to us. So Moses sent word for the people to stop giving, and they did. Moses sent word. To the people to stop giving, and they did. Enough is enough. When will your pastor say enough? When will your bishop, when will your pope say enough? They can never because they already put you in the path. Even if they say enough, you will say I'm giving because you have been brainwashed, you have been programmed that that's, that's where your healing lies, that's where your breakthrough lies, where that's where your blessing lies. You must give. They can never say enough. And even if they say it, people will not stop because they have already brainwashed people so deep that people don't think for themselves. Moses said enough. No Pope can say enough today. No Apostle can say enough today. No Prophet can say enough today. No Evangelist can say enough today. No Pastor can say enough today. No teacher can say enough today. All of them are thieves and robbers. Robbing people. They never say enough. Stop giving my people. We are worshipping this one God. You know, uh, we have enough. But you see them. Oh, they, are they, they build the church. Oh, the church is getting old now. They begin to renovate it. Raising money for it. But their members are languishing in poverty. They keep robbing people in tithes and offering, and their countries in Africa becoming world capital of poverty. And they tell you God is good all the time. Chris also said the seventh thing I picked. I said, "Why are you borrowing money from the from the nations that don't have it?" That's a silly question. You don't borrow from someone that don't have. Those countries that are borrowing from have, they have money. They have money. That's why they are borrowing from them. You say, why are you borrowing money from? Who borrow money from poor person? You go to somebody that is rich to borrow money. Somebody you know that have money. And they give it to you. When you listen to Chris, you will know he's listening to some all these Africans who are talking about evolution and all that because that's the type of thing they have been saying that the, the, the white people will take from Africa you know, take things Africans don't care about and they will go and make it then Africans will go and buy it like the things we are uh, importing from China and other places the things they used to make those things they took it from our land then we import it from them we sell it, make money. I am rich. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you're a slave. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hear what he said. He said, Europe don't have enough resources to borrow you money. Neither does China. You don't know what he's saying. Because... He's just trying to impress his members, especially now coronavirus has deal with hear that uh, sheep shouting in the background. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. 
And then we, are, we say, oh, that guy is good. Then we give you one good branch, the pastor, to make money. <laughs> He's following increase. Nonsense. They don't have enough resources to borrow you money. They are making money from your resources. And this man is serving a God. He said, nothing will happen unless he permit it. So God is watching those foreign, foreign nations, robbing Africans, and he's selling that thing to Africa again. And he's not doing anything. He's just sitting in heaven, laughing at the plight of Africans. And many Africans are dying for this God. Come on, wake up, my people, please. Wake up, Africans. Trust God. Trust Jesus Christ. Say they are only borrowing you what they get from you, what they take from you. Is it not the same thing men of God are doing? At the end of the year, Thanksgiving service, they use part of the money they stole from people. Say, oh, we are giving food to motherless home, all these giving donations. You know, that's what they stole from the poor and the needy ones. And they say, we are giving to those in need. We are giving to those. Uh, and the poor, uh, the poor and the needy in their church, they think, oh, I'm participating. That's part of what I did. No, that's silly. That's nonsense. Then the eighth thing, which that's what he closed with, and that's what I'm closing with, he said, wake up. How I wish preachers we begin to say that word, wake up, wake up. You see, people will begin to think, wake up. So I, I need to wake up. Let them begin to preach wake up in their churches. People will begin to wake up. People will begin to think. Because you have to explain what wake up means. Wake up means think for yourself. Use your brain and use your mind. When you, when you think for yourself, you activate your brain. Mm, you use some mind. That's what he says. Say we need leaders that can think. Leaders that have brain, leaders that have some might, right? That's what he said. That's a mind, whether mind or might, is the same thing. Wake up, and I'm calling on Chris and every ministers of God in Africa to wake up. Stop stealing. That's what I mean when I say wake up. I mean stop stealing. Galatians chapter four, verse twenty-eight. Uh, it's their Bible. Hear, hear what their Bible say about them. 428 Ephesians chapter 4 28 He said if you are a thief quit stealing be honest and work hard so you will have something to give to people in need This is for the pastors This is for the ministers of God who are collecting tax and offering you are stealing stop stealing you are a thief He said if you are a thief if you are collecting tithes and offering, you are a thief. If you are a pastor, if you are a priest, if you are a man, if you are if you are leading any congregation in the name of God, you are a thief. Taking from them, he says, stop stealing, be honest, and walk with your hand, work hard, so you will have something to give people in need, not collecting from them. Oh, you have to sow seed for God to solve your problem. You are a thief. When I say wake up, I mean stop stealing. And when I say wake up, I mean stop preaching God. Stop preaching Jesus. When I say wake up, I mean stop. Stop depending on foreigners. That's what I mean when I say wake up. I have been saying this. Africans, we have all we need to make ourselves better in Africa. We don't need any foreign support. We don't need them. We were existing without their support before they invaded. But now we will rise up. We will no longer treat them as our friends. We will treat them as our enemies that they are. Africans, you should know that you have no friend in the world. Use what you have to better yourselves. But you must wake up first. When you wake up, then you know better with, through research. And when you know better, you begin to unite. I have gone through these phases. And you, then you fight 
to recover your heritage. That's the face I'm waiting for majority of us to wake up so we can do it. Together we will rise up to fight to recover our heritage and be wiser than our enemies, not loving our enemies. Africans, you have no friend under the sun. It is time you wake up and stop being followers. Peace.